Well, joining me now from Washington, D.C. is Jonathan Weiner. He was the U.S. Special Envoy for Libya. In Tunis is Juma Al-Gamati. He's the head of Libya's Tahrir Party and a member of the U.N.-backed political dialogue group. Gentlemen, thanks for joining us. Juma, Haftar has moved on Tripoli. Do you believe that he's willing to destroy Tripoli in order to retake it? I think Haftar will uh, spare nothing uh, to achieve his goal of taking over um, Tripoli. Uh, so far, his military campaign, the indiscriminate uh, attack and bombardment, the lack of any uh, care about uh, the human aspect of it, the humanitarian aspect of, of his operation, his uh, air bombardment of the civilian airport while uh, passenger flights are landing and taking off shows that the man doesn't care about any consequences as long as he achieves his goal of taking over Tripoli and hence take over Libya and establish his dream of the one-man military absolute rule. Jonathan Weiner, we have strong credible reports that the French, the Italians and the UK all tried to convince him otherwise a few weeks ago. He'd signaled his intent to move on Tripoli. They tried to say, please don't do it. They could not. The international community is condemning him now. The UN Secretary General is saying, please stop. He's not stopping. What gives him the confidence? Well, he saw what Gaddafi did in 1969, which is declare that he was uh, taking over the country, take the TV uh, stations and radio stations, and it all fell. It all magically collapsed, and Gaddafi then ruled for 42 years, becoming not only powerful but very wealthy and potentially establishing a dynasty. This is what is in General Khalifa Haftar's head, I believe. I've, I spent time with him. Mm -hmm. Um, I was told in uh, November 2016 he was going to invade and take Tripoli in December 2016. I told him not to do it, red light. I told his military advisor and sons, red light, don't do it. We organized every other country with an interest in Libya to tell him the same thing. And, and uh, he didn't do it. And now that he doesn't want to do it, do you think, Jonathan, this is a fight to the finish? you think he's done with talking? Well, he's never been willing to actually compromise hmm. uh, on this issue of whether he was going to run the country or not as its sole determined uh, dictator. Uh, he doesn't believe the country's ready for democracy. He said that to me. Uh, the politicians are no good. Um, I'll make Libya safe and secure from the terrorists and Islamists. I'll get rid of them all, and they can do health care and education and we'll have military governors in place. That's how he wants to approach things. Mm. Uh, Juma, so the GNC has been trying to negotiate with him and the Siraj. There has been a process over the past couple of years. Has that all been a waste of time now? And might it be a case where you're also outgunned by him because he's moving fast and swallowing up a lot of ground? Well, first of all, reports uh, today uh, in the media and, and, and other sources uh, confirm that uh, over the last four or five years, Haftar has never been serious about dialogue, about a political uh, settlement, uh, about a political deal. He has been, in, in fact, engaging in these sort of political uh, 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 dialogues simply to waste, to, to, to just waste time for the other side and to gain time on his side to prepare for this uh, operation, which he sees as the final step of him uh, taking uh, over. So I think he dealt with Saraj and others with dishonesty, with deceit, when he uh, uh, explicitly expressed that he's willing mm. uh, to support a political deal, but actually implicitly and uh, and and in reality, he, he was never genuinely serious about that. And his intentions were never for a political settlement, but were always for a, a military showdown to take over the country by force. So now we are faced with this situation where, in, in, in essence, we have only two choices, either Haftar succeeds and he takes over Tripoli and he establishes his military dictatorship and one-man rule and we regress back to the era of Gaddafi or we fight him and then we defeat him and then the other discourse which the majority of Libyans who are engaged in the political process want which is to move forward to establish 
a civilian rule, uh, a democratic state, a state based mm -hmm. on rule of law and uh, building an institutional state, a state based on institutions and rule of law. So really, it's it, it, we, we don't have a third choice, unfortunately. And uh, it's up to the Libyans right. uh, to unite and to show the, to show resolve and to fight uh, uh, his, his, his campaign. Otherwise, I think Libya is doomed. It's, it's, I think it's futile to actually uh, count on the international community, because I believe that they are divided. And countries like France, right. I think, are giving him a tacit support. And uh, I think implicitly, they have given him the green light to right. go ahead and try this campaign. OK, so, so Jonathan Weiner, let me uh, bring to your attention that joint statement about Lib Libya by France, Italy, the UAE, the UK, and the US. We believe strongly that there is no military solution to the Libya conflict. Our governments oppose any military action in Libya. How can, how can any Libyans take that, that statement seriously when at least two of those governments in that joint statement support Haftar, whether tacitly or, or overtly? Well, support is a, a big word, and it encompasses a lot of different things. And you've left out Russia which has really played a very substantial role in Haftar's success by funding it with billions of uh, dollars worth of counterfeit dinars that have been in circulation now since the spring of 2016, which have played a substantial role in Haftar's ability to build patronage networks and to function. But uh, I think that the support has been for what both have seen as counter-terrorist operations in Benghazi. I have no reason to believe that any of these countries supported the attack on Tripoli. I know some people think maybe they did. I don't. I've seen them um, uh, support some things and not support others. I think they have been playing with fire with Haftar. Mm. I think he uh, makes his own decisions ultimately based on his mixture of military and political calculations. And those calculations are not always right. I mean, he did declare a coup in February 2014 on radio. Nobody followed, or on television, nobody followed the, the coup. And he moved east, built some foreign support, built some domestic support from people in the east who felt aggrieved uh, by the West getting more during the Qaddafi years. Uh, and we've seen what happened since. He did a three year siege of Benghazi. Three years. Jumal Gamati. Right. Certainly. Jumal Gamati, at the moment, there's no clear evidence that the French, the Russians, the Egyptians, the Emiratis have actually given the man the green light. Can you accept that? Well, um, I think the French vetoed uh, a statement by the European Union a few days ago in which they were going to uh, include Haftar by name uh, in the statement and call upon him to cease uh, military operations and uh, go back to the positions before this latest uh, military campaign started. Also, in, in the last meeting of the Security Council, I think Russia vetoed the same thing, uh, objected to including or naming Haftar by name. We know very well that the Emiratis have always given him all, as, all sorts of support not just political, but also military, financial, media, intelligence, and logistical support. And so does Egypt and possibly other uh, Gulf countries uh, uh, as well. So uh, the, the, the French ambassador, the lady in Tripoli, unfortunately, has been quoted in meetings where she thinks that uh, after taking over Libya and, in her eyes, stabilizing the country might not be a bad option. So uh, all mm -hmm. reports point that the French are actually uh, counting on Haftar to take over and stabilize Libya. And obviously, in that way, the, he will secure their interest. And we know that there is right. a big competition between the French and the Italians over Libya. That, that has not been a secret. That has been very overt and open over the last year or two. Juma, how do you feel about the fact that some believe that Libya is the type of country where, well, maybe it doesn't need democracy. Maybe it needs a strong man like Haftar. That's why he'll get rid of the extremist Islamists, and he'll keep the place stable. How do you feel about that? Well, I think it's an insult to any human being on earth to say that they don't need democracy. Because what does democracy mean? It means 
human rights, guaranteeing human rights. It means guaranteeing freedoms. It means guaranteeing dignity. And it means guaranteeing uh, all aspects of economic, political, uh, social, and, and intellectual uh, rights. I, th I think uh, uh, it's intrinsic in all human beings to live free and, and enjoy uh, justice. So to say that Libyans don't need democracy or other people don't need democracy, it's an insult. Why don't we let the Libyans themselves decide whether they need democracy or not? The majority, overwhelming majority of Libyans have been engaged in a process over the last uh, few years in this transition since 2011. Mm -hmm. They have been engaged in a process to come up to craft a constitution, to come up with a democratic constitution, to initiate uh, state building, to, 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 to actually set up a civilian rule based on uh, state institutions, rule of law, uh, respect of human rights, guaranteeing freedoms. Because this is the only thing that, car that, car that car can guarantee justice and fight Understood. corruption and allow people to enjoy, to enjoy their wealth and actually prosper. This is proved all over the world. You only need to compare between the democratic world and the non-democratic world. You only look at North Korea and South Korea to see the benefits of democracy. Libyans are not stupid. The young generations of Libyans are highly okay. educated okay. and they know what's going on in the world. And what they want is democracy and not going back to dictatorship. Let me go back to Jonathan Weiner. So we look at Hefter coming, trying to take over Tripoli. And the obvious question is, does Siraj's government need international help? After everything that happened in 2011 and the aftermath, where people said, yes, we ousted Gaddafi with the greatest military force on the planet with NATO. Afterwards, Barack Obama, David Cameron, everybody signaled regret that the West bungled that process. Is there any country willing to go and help the GNC militarily now? Oh, militarily? I think it would be a very bad idea. What we need is to have no one intervening militarily on any side. Uh, the, the fighting needs to stop. The conflict needs to stop. Libyans are uh, of Tripoli, uh, from Misrata and from Zintan, are all coming together uh, to uh, fight uh, the forces uh, from the east. Uh, there are three possibilities here. One is that there'll be a standoff and there'll be a long siege as there was in Benghazi. That would be absolutely horrific for Libya, mm -hmm. horrific for the world, horrific for North Africa, the Sahel. It would just be catastrophic. The second possibility is that they repel a General Haftar and chase him and his forces back some considerable distance, and he's irretrievably weakened. And this, um, this challenge um, uh, to democracy ends that way. The third possibility is that there is a ceasefire and a pullback from Haftar, and that political negotiations resume uh, with everyone having learned something from this. Um, I would like to see as little bloodshed and conflict as possible, and to have this over as quickly as possible. But I'm not going to be the one who gets to decide. Libyans are going to decide. It won't be foreigners. No, what foreigners can do is to tell Libyans, cut it out, mm -hmm. and tell Haftar, stop, pull back. And, and pull all support for him. That is what France needs to do and communicate very clearly privately as well as publicly. Uh, that is what the Emiratis and Egyptians hopefully are already doing uh, privately. Um, I have very little hopes that's what Russia will do, but maybe they would as well. Jumal Gamati, can Siraj's GNC conduct its volcano of anger and win without outside help? Well, the over majority of people, especially in the west of Libya, from Masrata all the way to the Tunisian border and all the cities and towns in the Nafusa mountain, have no choice now. It's make or break. It's to be or not to be. They have all mobilized their forces now to stand up to Haftar, who came from over a thousand kilometers to take over the capital, a capital that houses three million people, almost half of the Libyan population. We have to stand up to him and defeat him. If we defeat him, he's, he's finished and he's out of the whole sea 
clean and then we can get on with the with with the job of of, of ending this transition with with uh, building the state we aspire to if he wins unfortunately it's a doomsday we 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 all lose we go back to the days of gaddafi to dictatorship to to tyranny and uh, to 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 uh, to horrific uh, human rights violations and the dream of the young Libyans who participated in the revolution of 2011 is all shattered. Okay, gentlemen, I've got to move on. And full disclosure, we had a guest who was a little more sympathetic towards Haftar and his intentions from Tobruk. And as you both know, we tried for about 30 minutes before the uh, segment started and throughout the segment to bring him in, but there were audio issues. It would have been interesting to hear his perspective, but perhaps next time we'll be Watching Libya very closely here on the Newsmakers. For the moment, let me thank you, Jonathan Weiner and Juma Al-Gamati. It's been a pleasure.